Everybody loves a good mystery. That's why crime dramas are so popular on television. No matter how advanced our technology becomes or how smart we are as a species, there are always things that we don't know and cannot explain. And that drives us mad. All over the world, there are great mysteries, old and new, all staring us in the face, and we might never be able to solve them. Here are some of our favorites. And if you have any theories about them, let us know down in the comments. The landscape of Siberia has always been a little like something from an alien world. It's cold, it's inhospitable, and it's not a place where life survives easy. It also hosts a great riddle. For the past few years, enormous holes have begun to appear in Siberia, and nobody knows why. The vast craters have been put down to anything from asteroid impacts to extraterrestrial visitors, but the best guess of scientists is that it's down to rapidly melting pingos. For the unfamiliar, a pingo is an ice plug just below the surface of the frozen water, topped off with a small mound. When it melts, it can cause a collapse of the ice around it. It sounds like a viable theory, but there's a problem with it. Many of the Siberian craters have rocks around their rims, as if they've spewed the rock outwards as part of some kind of explosion. The craters can be as deep as 50 feet, and they're currently appearing at the rate of three or four a year. Hopefully we get an explanation soon, before Siberia turns into one giant crater. When Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 disappeared without a trace on March 8, 2014, it made headlines all over the world. Six years have gone by since then, and there's still no sign of the plane. Nobody's ever located the wreck of the plane, and there's been no word from any of the passengers who were aboard the flight at the time it vanished. The aircraft had taken off from Kuala Lumpur as planned and was on its way to Beijing in China, but it lost contact with its airline just after midnight while it was close to Phuket Island. Some pieces of the plane eventually washed up on East African beaches, which suggest that it eventually came down in the water in the South Indian Ocean, a long way off course. The most popular theory as to its fate is that there was a mass hypoxia event aboard the plane, depriving the crew and passengers of oxygen and rendering them unconscious. The pilot would have tried to change course to make a safe landing in Africa when the problem occurred, but never made it. This does not, however, explain why no attempt was made to send a distress call. Jack the Ripper is one of the most notorious criminals and serial killers in all of history. He terrorized the streets of London in the 1880s, claiming at least five victims in a short space of time, and demonstrating advanced knowledge of the human anatomy in the process. There's a big difference between Jack the Ripper and most serial killers, though. We don't know who he was. We don't even know that his name was Jack. That's just a nickname given to him by the press based on a letter sent to the police that was allegedly signed by the killer. The letter was one of several sent to Scotland Yard, taunting the police about their lack of progress on the case and may have been a forgery. It's thought that over 100 possible suspects were considered by law enforcement options, but they were never able to pin the crime on anybody. The anatomical knowledge displayed by Jack suggests that he may have been a doctor or a surgeon, but no doctor or surgeon was ever implicated in the crime. Jack the Ripper got away with his foul deeds and will retain his anonymity forever. We could make a whole video about the mysteries of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. It's four and a half thousand years old, and we still don't truly understand how it was even built. That alone would make it worthy of inclusion here, but there's another mystery about the pyramid that only came to light in 2017. Using sophisticated scanning technology, archaeologists have identified two large voids inside the structure of the pyramid, and they have no idea what's hiding inside them. They might be nothing more than service tunnels used during the construction of the building, or they could contain undiscovered tombs. One of the voids is 100 feet long and appears to be roughly the same shape as the Grand Gallery, which is directly below it. It's possible that it may just have been included in the design to reduce the weight of the rock above the Grand Gallery and prevent it from collapsing. 
but it would be nice to find out for sure. The voids don't appear to have any passages leading to them directly, so reaching them won't be easy. Scientists are now in the process of designing new tunneling robots to help them with the job. The name Mess Inoc translates into English as Little Source of Copper, which gives you a clue regarding what you might find at this site in an unpopulated region of eastern Afghanistan. The copper deposit isn't the only thing there, though. There's also a ruin of an ancient Buddhist settlement containing more than 400 statues and a monastery. As amazing as that is, it isn't the site's big mystery. The mystery is an even older settlement below the Buddhist monastery, which archaeologists have only just begun to discover within the past few years. They believe it's more than 5,000 years old, and may even contain the oldest copper smelter in the world. Unfortunately, the entire site is under threat from a mining project, so experts now have to work as quickly as possible to retrieve what they can from the site before the machines move in to destroy it. It's currently thought to be the biggest dig site in the world, and so it's to be hoped that the experts can identify these Bronze Age copper smelters before they run out of time. Of all the ghost ships in history, the Mary Celeste is probably the most famous. All was well aboard the American merchant Brigantine when she left New York Harbor on November 7, 1872, bound for Italy. There were no indications that she was about to become one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of all time. Eleven people were aboard the vessel, Captain Briggs, his wife and child, and eight members of the crew who knew the captain well. The day they left New York was the last time anyone saw or heard from any of them. The Marie Celeste was eventually found drifting near the Azores on the 5th of December the same year. Her sails were up, there was at least six months worth of food supplies aboard, and the ship was undamaged, but she was empty. The ship was salvaged and brought home and would sail on for another 12 years under new captains, but people never stopped wondering what happened to Captain Briggs, his family and friends. The idea of mutiny is almost unthinkable, and if the ship had been battered in a storm, it should have shown signs of damage. There appears to have been no reason to order the ship's abandonment, and yet she was abandoned. Puzzling. One sunny day in 1836, a group of Scottish children was hunting rabbits in the Scottish mountains when they came across a previously unexplored cave. Inside it, they found 17 4-inch long coffins, each of which contained a wooden doll dressed in cotton. No further light has ever been shed on who made them, when, or why. Some people have theorized that they could be tributes to sailors lost at sea. A darker explanation may be that each one represents one of the victims of Burke and Hare. To make the whole thing even weirder, an identical doll in an identical coffin was mailed to the National Museum of Scotland in 2014, carrying a note which simply said 18 in Roman numerals. Some of the coffins were visibly older than others, which suggests that the collection was added to over time, rather than being deposited in one go. Could they all be totems of some ceremonial witchcraft practice? Is it an art installation that's been misunderstood? Nearly 100 years later, it's doubtful that we'll ever know or understand their purpose. When a Pakistani man was caught trying to sell an Egyptian mummy on the black market for more than $10 million in the year 2000, it caught the attention of both the world's media and law enforcement officials. They seized the mummy and took it to Karachi's National Museum for further investigation. The mummification ritual that had been performed on the cadaver was in keeping with ancient Egyptian traditions, and the sarcophagus that proclaimed its occupant to be the daughter of King Xerxes seemed convincing. But the results of carbon dating shocked everyone. This was no long-dead Egyptian princess. This was a 21-year-old female who had passed away no later than 1996. This prompted a murder investigation and landed the would-be mummy seller in jail, but he denied any knowledge of the true identity of the mummified woman. A cold case was opened, but no leads were ever established, and the mystery of the mummified woman lingers on. Trying to uncover the fate of the Ark of the Covenant 
has been a lifetime's work for countless historians and archaeologists over the centuries. And yet, what happened to the chest, if it ever really existed at all, remains unknown. If ancient religious texts are to be believed, the chest contains the stone tablets that bear the Ten Commandments, delivered to Moses by God on Mount Sinai. Around two and a half thousand years ago, during the Babylonian occupation of Jerusalem, the chest, or ark as it's become known, vanished and was never seen again. Some believe that the ark still exists inside the St. Mary of Zion Cathedral in Aksum, Ethiopia, where a nameless man known only as the Guardian stands over them in eternal watch. He's never allowed anyone close enough to the chest to look inside it and is sworn never to do so. When he passes away, his duties will pass to another guardian, who will be handed the same task. Is there anything in the Ethiopian cathedral? Was the Ark ever real? Or is it just one of the most fantastical fairy tales ever told? Many people have heard of the Roswell incident. A fabled UFO crash landing in an American town in 1947 that's now widely believed to have been a hoax. Far fewer people know of the Aurora Incident of 1897, in which another unidentified flying object came crashing down to Earth and destroyed a windmill in the process. The first eyewitness to arrive at the scene was a man who ought to be believed. He was a local judge named J. S. Proctor, and the windmill was his. The Wright brothers were six years away from performing the world's first manned flight and the craft that had come down in Aurora, Texas, appeared to the people at the time to be made of a type of metal they'd never encountered before, resembling aluminum but far heavier. It's said that the craft and the uniform of the pilot inside it bore strange writing that looked like hieroglyphics. One police officer who attended the scene remarked that the pilot wasn't human, which is a bold statement to make. Unsure what to do with the discovery, the townspeople deposited the wreckage down a well and gave the pilot a Christian burial. Now, a century later, the well is sealed up, and the burial site was robbed during the 1970s. We have no way of verifying anything that was reported at the time. The Hesdalen Lights are a known phenomenon that occurs in Norway's Hesdalen Valley between 20 and 30 times a year. We'd call them a natural phenomenon, but we can't say for sure that they happen naturally. In fact, we can't say for sure how they happen at all. The lights can appear anywhere in the eight-mile stretch of the valley and were first noticed during the 1930s. They can be almost any color and may last a few seconds or a few hours each time they appear. Even more strangely, sometimes they stay in one place and other times they appear to move rapidly. The best theory scientists have ever come up with on the matter is that the lights are the result of hydrogen, oxygen, and sodium reacting with the large scandium deposits in the Hesdalen Valley to create a completely unique effect, although they've been unable to reproduce the effect under test conditions. It's almost unthinkable that something that occurs so frequently and can be so easily observed defies any rational explanation, and yet the Hesdalen lights continue to appear, defying science every time they do so. One day after Christmas in the year 1900, a boat was on its way to the Eileen Moore Lighthouse of the Flannan Islands in the Outer Hebrides. Aboard the boat was Captain James Harvey and a man named Joseph Moore. Moore was en route to replace the lighthouse keeper, and it should have been a routine trip. What they discovered at the lighthouse was anything but routine. A half-eaten meal was still on the table, and a chair was knocked over in the kitchen. The clock in the kitchen had also stopped. A search ensued, but there was no sign of the three-man lighthouse crew anywhere on the island. The keeper's logbook, kept by James Ducat, made for foreboding reading. On the 12th of December, he spoke of a storm more fearsome than anything he'd seen before, so severe that his assistant William MacArthur, an experienced mariner, was crying. A day later, the storms were still present, and all three men were praying together for safety. Despite the fact that they should have been safe and dry in their lighthouse 150 feet above sea level. On the 15th of December, Ducat's final entry in the log said simply, God is over all. 
Here's the information that will send a shiver up your spine. There were no storms reported anywhere else in the area during those three days. The men from the lighthouse were never found, and their vanishing remains unexplained. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!